Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Well, today I'm gonna put my left-handed golf swing to test compared to my right-handed golf swing. I really want to talk about a lot of TrackMan numbers that we use in club fitting and also the numbers that we use to explain differences between club comparisons and equipment knowledge and everything like that. So really, this is gonna be the first time that I'm going to be putting my left-handed swing on camera. I'm gonna say it right now, it's definitely not pretty. I have not done really any left-handed practice, or anything like that. I can hit the golf ball, but that's about as good as it gets. So I'll really kind of talk about the differences between why my right-handed golf swing is so successful. And then I'll look at my left-handed swing and I'll explain the differences between the two of them, see if there's any glaringly obvious differences that a lot of players may stumble into. So I'm sp specifically thinking dynamic loft. A lot of times people ask how I can hit a seven iron so far. It's because I can press the ball very well. So quite a big difference between my left-handed and right-handed golf swing. For today's test, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start out to try and hit several shots left-handed and right-handed with the same swing speed. So that'll be a good test for me to do left-handed and right-handed. I'll definitely have to kind of take a look at all the numbers and explain the differences. So we're going to talk about club speed, we're going to talk about ball speed, we're going to talk about smash factor. Smash factor is definitely a highly debated topic here on our, on our channel. And I want to talk about the difference between left-handed and right-handed swing and why my efficiency number, why my smash factor is a little bit higher. We'll talk about launch, let's talk about spin, let's talk about height, let's talk about landing angle, let's talk about the tech angle. And then finally what I want to do is I want to talk about the differences in a left-handed fitting, a lot of people will ask, hey, what's that club path number mean? What is that face path number? What is that face to path? Well, it is reverse for a left-handed golfer. So we'll talk about the difference between a right-handed golfer and a left-handed golfer. So not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. My left-handed golf swing, as I mentioned, is not, not perfect, but a lot of people that come into the store for a club fitting may be in the same situation. They may not fit into blades. They may, not, they may need a club that's gonna be a little bit more forgiving there too. And I would say, I would definitely be into that candidate as a left-handed golfer if I was to try and play golf left-handed. So I'm excited to test, do this test today. It's gonna to be a little unique, so it's gonna be a fun process to compare the differences between a left-handed golf swing and my right-handed golf swing. Also, before I hit some shots, I do ask, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty of other great content and interesting content like this coming your way in the future. Well, let's hit some uh, right-handed and left-handed golf shots. So first, I'm gonna start with my left-handed swing. Yes, I do have the wrong glove on. Uh, just something I'm kinda, kinda used to having the glove on my left hand there too. So it's gonna be interesting, different feel, different look different setup here as well. Let's hit some shots with left-handed and kind of take a look at some numbers. As I mentioned, my, as I mentioned, my, my left-handed golf swing definitely isn't, isn't perfect by, by all means. But I can hit the golf ball. That was a really good swing there. Very nice. I crushed, crushed that one. Okay, I hit several shots left-handed. I'm gonna make the switch now to hit a right-handed shot. Okay, so that was seven shots with my left-handed swing. I thought I, did, I thought I did pretty good there. Um, definitely first time on camera putting my left swing on, left-handed swing on there. I made, connect, made good connection. I got some good sound data to compare against my right-handed swing. So my average club speed was 73 miles an hour with my left-handed swing. So I'm gonna try and swing at 73 miles an hour with my right-handed swing, and let's take a look at any differences that we notice.
Okay, let's take a look at the numbers comparing my left-handed golf swing and my right-handed golf swing. So I did a pretty good job here looking at the numbers. You can see that my average club speed left-handed was 73.1, average club speed was 73.4 with the right-handed golf swing. So Normally, I would swing a 7-iron around about 88 miles an hour, is usually my average with a 7-iron, so it's quite significantly less. But let's take a look at the differences and, and compare some, some averages. So first thing we notice here is ball speed. So when I was swinging my club with a right-handed golf swing, my ball speed was 103.1. So smash factor of 1.40, that is ball speed divided by club speed, so 103 divided by 73 gave me a smash factor of 1.40. We know that tour average is about 1.38 with a 7 iron, so I was pretty close there with my slower golf swing. And I'll explain why my smash factor is just a little bit higher with the right-handed swing than the left-handed swing. Uh, left-handed, so if we look at my left-handed golf swing, I did a pretty good job. We'll notice that my ball speed on average was 92 miles an hour, with the club speed at 73 that gave us a smash factor of 1.27. Not too bad for jumping on camera and hitting some left-handed golf swings. So, but you can definitely notice that my efficiency was better with my right-handed swing than my left-handed swing. More ball speed is gonna equal more distance overall. If we look here at other numbers, the launch angle. So really kind of interesting here, if you look at my right-handed swing, my average launch angle was 17.1 where my average launch angle with the left-handed swing was 23.6 degrees. I'm going to scoot across to just take a look here at this dynamic loft number right here. So I mentioned in the intro, um, dynamic loft and compression is very, very important to get the ball to go a little further. Well, we can see here, right-handed, my dynamic loft was 21.2. So I'm compressing the ball very, very well. My left-handed golf swing dynamic loft was 30.2. So I'm hitting with the ping I-210, right-handed and left-handed, both got the black dot triangle on them. But we'll notice that my dynamic loft was nine degrees higher with the left-handed golf swing. Nine degrees higher is gonna cause the ball to launch a lot higher. It's also gonna affect distance and spin as well, but nine degree difference. So the ping, I-210 has 33 degrees of loft on it, and we want to make sure that our dynamic loft is nothing close to what the actual state, stated loft on the 7-iron on the is for sure. So that would be, right off the bat, potential for me in my left-handed golf swing to pick up some significant improvements by compressing the ball there too. So if your dynamic loft comes in with a dynamic loft on the higher side, high 20s, low 30s, it's telling me you're not compressing the ball very well. So that's a big, big difference. That's why the launch angle is a little higher with the left-handed swing than the right-handed swing. We'll notice what happened when my dynamic loft was higher. What's happened is my spin rate was significantly higher with the left-handed golf swing. We're talking about 1,800 RPMs of spin. And I know by doing a lot of club testing is that my spin rate with my right-handed swing is definitely kind of on the lower side because I can press the ball a lot. I don't have the steepest attack angle to generate spin loft on the ball. Um, that's why it would be a concern if I was going to swing at 73 miles an hour with my right-handed swing. I would not get the ball up in the air high enough to stop. So you can kind of see here that my, if we look at my height, my height was 10 feet lower with my right-handed swing than with my left-handed swing. The difference between my carry and total distance, so with the right-handed swing was 144 going 161, the left-handed swing was 122 going 130. So it was stopping faster with the left-handed swing because it was spinning more and flying a little bit higher. It definitely wasn't going further. That's why I swing faster. I swing, I swing faster because I can hit the ball a little further and get the ball up in the air. And because I don't spin the ball a crazy amount, I need to get the ball high enough to get the ball to stop on the green. And that's just one, one way that I'm able to generate quite a bit of distance with my 7-iron. So kind of really interesting taking a look at those numbers. 
Um, landing angle, landing angle, I always talk about 45 degrees with a kind of seven iron is kind of where we want to be at least. Well, my left handed swing, I was at 45 degrees. Actually, not too bad. But my right handed swing, once again, because I compress the ball, over compress the ball essentially with only having 73 miles an hour of club speed, we noticed my landing angle was quite a bit lower there as well. So 37. So I would need to swing a little faster at my normal swing speed to get, generate a little more height and landing angle comparing those two. Um, yeah, so kind of interesting. Uh, if we look at attack angle, kind of interesting how my attack angle minus 2.5, minus 1.9, so pretty similar across the board here. One thing I kind of noticed is that the range was just a little bit more exaggerated. So my consistency with my left-handed swing, which I, I would expect because I haven't swung left-handed in about a year. So other than doing the, the speed stick training reverse side with, uh, with swinging that direction, uh, I have not tried to hit a golf ball left-handed. So I did a pretty good job to take a kind of look at the numbers and compare the, the differences here. Um, I want to talk on uh, the differences between club path, face angle, and face to path between right-handed and a left-handed golfer. So my club path right-handed is in to out. So I want to generate a little bit of a draw. So you'll notice that my club path numbers here are all positive right-handed. So on average, my club path was positive two degrees. So that is right-handed. Positive means to the right. Negative means to the left. So keep that in mind. So positive in to out with the right-hander swing. My face angle on average was dead square on average. And my face to path was minus 2.2. So that's going to generate a little bit more, a little bit of a curve. That face to path is the difference between your club path and face angle. The reason I want to bring this up is when you're a left-handed golfer, you've got to kind of think the opposite. So if, I, if you had come in and I was looking at these negative numbers, I'd, tell, I'd, I'd say, oh, maybe that your swing's kind of over the top a little bit, a little out to, out to in. Um, but it's not the case. When you're a left-handed golfer, remember the, the theory. Negative means to the left positive means to the right. So my club path was actually minus 4.9, which is almost five degrees in to out with my left-hander swing. My face angle was open 3.7 degrees, and my face to path was 1.3. So I'm going to bring up one more number here and curve, and just going to see what my average curve was when we compare the two of them. So we can see here that when I was right-handed, I curved the ball to the left, so a little bit of a draw. When I was left-handed, I curved the ball a little bit to the right, still a little bit of a draw. So that's kind of showing the kind of the difference. Any time you get a negative face-to-path number with a right-handed golfer, you're going to cause that ball to curve to the left. Any time you get a positive face-to-path number with a left-handed golfer, it's going to curve to the right. Uh, so that's kind of sh showing the kind of the differences between face angle, club path, and face to path with a right-handed and left-handed golfer. I do want to finish off just to swing a few shots with normal swing seven iron now, and just kind of show the differences. Talked about that um, the compression, and talked about the, the landing angle and height with um, not being high enough when I'm only swinging at 73 miles an hour. So I'm going to swing a few normal swings here to finish with and just kind of show the differences between what the difference kind of makes with regards to club speed as well there too. But this is, this is really cool to take a look at the differences between left-handed golf swing and right-handed golf swing. I would say I did a pretty good job. We kind of take a look at the dispersion pattern here on the right. You can see the yellow circle, that's my left-handed swing. The purple circle, that was my, my right-handed swing. I'd expect my, my right-handed swing to be a little bit closer together because um, that's what I, I swing right-handed. Um, but did a pretty good job left-handed. You can see it was relatively kind of consistent there as well. So that was kind of my, my total distance when I was hitting left-handed and right-handed. So I'm going to finish off. I'm going to hit a few more shots with the normal golf swing right-handed, and we'll take a look at those numbers.
Okay, let's take a look at my normal speed comparison versus the speed at only 73 miles an hour. As I mentioned, I was having a hard time stopping the ball on the green with my swing speed only at 73 miles an hour with my right handed swing, and the ball was spinning a little bit less than I would like. So let's kind of compare the numbers. So if we take a look here, my normal club speed with a 7 iron is usually around about 88 miles an hour. So I was at 87.7, so pretty close there today after hitting the right and left handed swing. Um, significant jump, jump in ball speed, so my ball speed was 128 versus 103. So my efficiency number went up a little bit higher there again. Um, we mentioned to do with the dynamic loft and the spin loft for reasons why I do get a higher efficiency smash factor number than what tour average is because I really do kind of compress the ball as a little guy. It's just one of the reasons why I hit the ball further. I don't try to hit the ball further. I just do hit my seven iron further. I hit my irons quite a bit further than what would be considered average for my, for my club speed. And it's just the way I deliver the club. It's to do with the attack angle. It's to do, to, to do with the uh, dynamic loft that I present at the club. Um, so really kind of interesting. Actually, this is really interesting. My launch angle with both the right-handed swing with 73 miles an hour average club speed and right-handed swing with 88 miles an hour club speed, 17.1, identical. That's, 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 pretty, that's pretty cool there to see. I'm I quite impressed that I'm able to swing kind of the same way. So I want to take a look here and see the dynamic loft here as well. 21.3, 21.2. So this is a really good um, chance to compare the differences between a faster club speed and a slower speed. So if we look here when I do swing faster, so when I was swinging at 88 miles an hour, my spin rate was 54.09 on average. When I was swinging at 73.4, my spin rate was 43 there on average. So about 1100 RPMs more spin when I generated more club speed. Normally I see more speed equals more spin. You can see a big difference in the carry distance, 144 to 187 and total distance 161 to 195. The big difference you'll notice is the separation between the carry and total distance. When I was only swinging at 73 miles an hour, 145 to 161, that's about 16 yards for it to stop. When I was normal speed, 187 to 195, so it took me eight yards to stop the ball there as well. And I was actually taking me eight yards to stop the ball with my left-handed swing. So because I generate more speed, we'll notice that my height went up. So normally tour average is about 100 to 110 feet in the air. So my height was about 109 with my normal speed versus 61 with my right-handed speed. More height is going to give me a better chance to stop the ball on the green. We'll notice what happened with more height is the landing angle significantly went up. Went up to 48.9 from 37.3. Mentioned that 45 degree mark is important because we want to make sure that we get the chance for the ball to stop on the green a little bit faster there, comparing the two of them there as well. Um, kind of interesting. Attack angle was the same, negative 2.7, negative 2.5. My club path is still a little in to out. Um, is that same amount of curve, 14 feet of curve, 13 feet of curve, face the path was still kind of a little to the left. So basically the exact same golf swing, just with 14 more miles an hour, more club speed. It's a good way to kind of compare the differences between them and, and see how far, um, see why that I hit the ball a little bit further. To do with this a dynamic loft. So I'm going to come back to this dynamic loft because I do compress the ball very well with my 7 iron, with my dynamic loft at 21 degrees. That's why I'm able to hit the ball a little further with my 7 iron. So whether you work with your instructor or really kind of work on compressing the ball, dynamic loft is going to be a very, very important piece. We don't want our dynamic loft to be close to the loft of what is on the 7 iron. So when I was hitting my left-hander swing, now I have no training left-handed at all, um, but you will notice that my dynamic loft was 30 degrees, so quite a big difference there as well. So this was, a, this was really fun. This was an interesting test to compare the differences between my left-handed swing and my right-handed swing and talk about the differences that we look use, at using the TrackMan data in 
club fittings and club comparisons there as well. So I do remind you, if you do like this content, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, really excited to bring plenty of great content this way as well. And then one other thing is if all of a sudden you come in for a club fitting and you notice there's some significant differences in the new clubs you're getting fit into, we do take trades. So make sure that you bring your current clubs in and we can help offset the prices on the new equipment to help with your new purchase of new equipment there as well. So we take trades online and in our stores. Uh, so make sure you come on in for a club fitting, compare the differences in new equipment. Uh, excited to bring the, this uh, content here today. Got plenty more coming your way in the future. Thanks. Bye.